New free-to-play details for Warhammer 40k Eternal Crusade emerge. Former Guild Wars 2 developers announced the new third-person MOBA Gigantic. Warframe's latest update adds a new PvP mode. Riot Games deactivates all League of Legends skin codes and much more on this week's episode of Free-to-Play Weekly. Exclusive interview with MMO Bomb, Behavior Interactive, the studio behind the upcoming Warhammer 40k Eternal Crusade, detailed the MMO's free-to-play option, which sees free-to-play players locked into playing only one of the game's four initial factions, the Orcs. According to Behavior, Eternal Crusade isn't so much a free-to-play game as it is a premium game with a free-to-play option. Free-to-play players will have access to several of the same classes as those with premium accounts, while more advanced classes such as the Mega Knobs will only be available to those that pay via either a subscription or in-game microtransactions. However, Behavior did mention these premium players would still need to use in-game currency to spawn as more advanced classes with subsequently higher XP rewards for killing them. In terms of balance, the studio is anticipating faction imbalance and says they'll be giving small bonuses to smaller factions and extra challenges for the big ones. Orcs in the 40k universe are typically defined by their large numbers, which makes up for their lack of individual strength against space marines. By funneling free-to-play players into choosing orcs, Behavior Interactive hopes this will help create the terrifying green tide they're supposed to be. For more information regarding Behavior's plans for free-to-play and internal crusade, you can read the full interview on MMOBomb.com by clicking on the link in the description box below. Some of the former lead developers behind StarCraft II, Guild Wars II, and State of Decay have banded together to form a new indie game studio known as Motiga. After securing $20 million in backing the studio announced its first title named Gigantic, a new free-to-play third-person action game which straddles the line between vertically focused arena brawler and MOBA. While Gigantic may have a few MOBA staples like upgradable abilities and two teams of five heroes, you won't find item shops or definable lanes filled with consistent creep waves to mow down. Gigantic is aiming a little larger with the introduction of Giant Guardians. These massive creatures serve as the main focus point for players as each team possesses a unique guardian with its own special abilities, whom players must protect while working with it in order to take out the opposing team's guardian. Movement is also a huge focus and gigantic, as the game's website mentions players will be able to sprint, dodge, aim, destroy barriers, hurdle obstacles, and leap from danger to safety. With an emphasis on vertical movement and the addition of physics-based abilities which can be upgraded and augmented to include new added bonuses, players in Gigantic will possess the freedom to create new combos best suited for the occasion. Alpha testing is set to begin soon and players with signups already available on the official website. RuneScape recently celebrated the launch of the long-awaited Legacy Mode with the return of the 138 combat formula. The new mode is the result of RuneScape's Power to the Players initiative, which saw players voting overwhelmingly in favor of its return. Legacy Mode is optional, allowing players to enter the world of RuneScape within the modern game while using the older style of combat and traditional interface. When turning the mode on, you enable older minimap icons, animations and stances, scale down life points and damage, pre-RuneScape 3 interfaces, and turn off abilities with scaled up auto attack damage. Evolution of combat has been tweaked as well, with the 138 combat formula having been reinstated to have equal contribution from melee, ranged, and magic. Special attacks have returned, strength bonuses have replaced critical hit chance. There are additional bonuses and balancing alterations that have been implemented as well, which will continue to be tuned for both combat styles in response to player feedback. For the long term, RuneScape players can expect more PvP minigames and the Wilderness, reworked equipment, and option to use Legacy Combat with the new interface system. Hazard Ops, the third-person cooperative shooter from European publisher Infernum has just recently moved into open beta. Along with the previously available 8 on 8 PvP and cooperative PvE modes, the transition into open beta also brings with it the new cooperative map Skull Island and adds King of the Hill to the list of the available game modes. While characters have been wiped in preparation for the open beta, those who participated in the closed beta will receive a first blood pack upon logging into the open beta courtesy of Infernum. It should be noted Hazard Ops is the same game as Zombies Monsters Robots, which also recently began its open beta under the publishing supervision of On Mass Entertainment in North America. Feature-wise, the two are nearly identical, but neither have an IP block, so players from both sides of the pond are free to play whichever suits them best. Hazard Ops was originally developed in the East under the name Mercenary Ops by former assistant Gears of War developer Yingpei Games. 
Neverwinter is poised to receive its second new class in the upcoming expansion module Tyranny of Dragons, set to drop on August 14th. Dubbed the Scourge Warlock, this new class can serve as a dedicated support or main damage dealer through the use of powerful curses and controllable soul puppets. To show off a few of the Warlock's special traits, Perfect World Entertainment recently released a new trailer detailing the caster's capabilities, while also giving players a small glimpse at some of Tyranny of Dragons' upcoming boss fights. While the cleric may heal their party members through the use of Holy Light, the Scourge Warlock prefers to take a more unorthodox approach. Through the use of their Temptation Feet Tree, Warlock players may bind their enemies' souls with the souls of their allies, creating a link by which they may literally suck the life out of their victims in order to heal allies in a battle. Auras and curses will also leave enemies weakened, while allies benefit from their bolstering effects. A more detailed dev blog for the Scourge Warlock can be found on Neverwinter's official site, which hint of a Hellbringer Paragon path for the class capable of opening the gates to the Nine Hells, a plane of absolute evil from which the Warlock may summon the demons within. Sounds like a nifty party trick. Digital Extremes has just pushed the Update 14 dubbed the Mad Cephalon live for Warframe, introducing a host of new features including a brand new 4v4 PvP mode while also reimagining Warframe's user interface and menu. Upon logging in, players will now access Warframe's various activity windows by interacting with devices located on each player's newly acquired personal ship. Once on board their ships, players can unlock a quest which gives them access to the newly genetic foundry, used for the breeding of new biological pets like the newly introduced Kubrow. Once hatched, a Kubrow can possess different personalities, which influence what abilities it possesses. As the Kubrow grows, it can be further enhanced by equipping it with powerful mods or by taking its genetic imprint and combining it with another player's in what amounts to a Pokemon-style breeding technique. With Update 14, Warframe PvP has been expanded upon the addition of the new Dark Sectors Conflict Game Mode. The 4 on 4 mode represents the largest PvP mode yet, with players assuming the role of either attacker or defender during a multi-staged mission. In terms of balance, at the beginning of each match, all players start out at rank 0 and progressively unlock Warframe levels as the match progresses. As a Warframe levels up, its power levels increase, re-enabling the frame's mods, abilities, and weapon augmentations over time. The new Warframe Mirage was also added in Update 14, with a knack for causing confusion by creating illusionary copies, booby-trapping nearby inanimate objects with explosive results, and throwing out a prismatic disco ball of energy which emits a barrage of burning laser beams before a second activation detonates the orb, blinding nearby enemies. What do you like most about the update? Let us know in the comments below. If you fancy purchasing rare and interesting player skins for your League of Legends champions from outside vendors, that's a pastime that has unfortunately come to an abrupt end. Riot Games has made an executive decision to nerf skin codes entirely after noticing an increase in fraud around third-party skin sites and skin reselling. Riot Games has been offering special skins to players that attend specific conventions or events for some time now, and it's been a hobby for many players to collect redemption codes and then sell them at a ridiculously high price. Ravenous League of Legends players would often pay a ridiculous amount of money, in some cases upwards of $500 to obtain the skin, and then would never receive them. This is obviously a problem, and to solve it, Riot Games has simply decided to stop it from happening by pulling the plug at the source. For players who still have legitimate unredeemed codes, they can send a request to Riot player support and include proof of ownership before July 24th. Riot will then add the content to their account. And the game of the week is LEGO Minifigures Online. LEGO Minifigures Online is an isometric, kid-friendly MMO where players can collect up to 100 distinct figurines ranging from a formidable ogre to a guy in a chicken suit, each with their own appropriately themed abilities and stats. Unlike a traditional MMO with one central character per player, LEGO Minifigures Online gives players the freedom to swap between three of their selected minifigures at any time. The ability to change between characters gives a player the opportunity to chain cast abilities together from multiple minifigures in order to create their own style of combat. Each minifigure can also be upgraded with golden stars which increase their base stats and provides them with set stat bonuses at regular intervals. Following the LEGO theme, players will sometimes encounter piles of LEGOs, which can be assembled to provide access to new areas or even rebuild a turret to help down a large boss. 
certain minifigures are even especially tailored for building, making them invaluable when trying to construct objects while in combat. In LMO, players can explore various themed worlds, which have players fighting swashbuckling pirates, medieval knights, and even space zombies. In the future, Funcom plans on adding unique PvP modes which offer both PvE and PvP objectives to players, while also continually adding new worlds for players to explore for free. And that's going to be all on this week's episode of Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. And be sure to head over to MMOBomb.com for more free to play action. Until next time, let's see me out.